you're on by Skype with Candice Gordon uh, from Berlin. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you? And wh why are you in Berlin? Because uh, it's really nice here. You live uh, there? I live here, yeah, most of the time. And uh, while you're over there, you, you, you've got a, an EP coming out, which you recorded in Dublin, I believe. Yeah, I recorded it um, a number of years ago, and I've sort of just been gradually uh, making it better and getting a good uh, support structure to release it properly. I did a sort of at least last year or the year before when I did like a funded uh, thing and I got raised money to get them pressed. But uh, I didn't. Um, now I have a distributor who's putting it in the shops. So it's kind of actually happening now. <laughs> Great. And the, so the songs, the six tracks on the EP, were recorded or were written over a long period of time while you were moving around or did you just sort of sit down and rework them when you felt ready for the record? Yeah, they were a collection that I was working on for a number of years. And actually, they were like I, I threw away quite a few songs that I had recorded as well, um, just because they didn't fit. So these six songs were sort of uh, very much like they seem very related and of like a theme. So it kind of works as a package. So... You're based in Berlin now, but you wrote, yeah. you wrote the songs while you're moving around, which is something yeah. that you do. You, you, you've been all over the world playing guitar and singing. But the sound of the record, in a weird way, seems to have that kind of, that sort of flavour of Berlin between the wars, that kind of Kurt Viley kind of thing. Was there any connection there prior to moving to Berlin? Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought that it had a Berlin kind of sound about it. Um, I was writing this album over the past uh, number of years. As, as you say, I was traveling. I was traveling with the circus for a while. And, I'd um, have to go back to that in a minute, but go on. <laughs> I particularly, uh, I was really into like gypsy, Roma gypsy music. Sure. And then uh, like a lot of kind of like Tom Waits kind of sounds as well, or his songs. Um, and I think I was really kind of trying to get that very sort of folk, like real folk music and folk stories kind sure. of vibe into the record. Um, although this, I think the songs are quite pop songs, you know. They, are, they are, yeah, but they have a sort of a, a seriousness and a darkness that I guess... Yeah, and I think like, they're sort of like more uh, anachronistic, I think. Sure. Well, like, maybe it's just that people who have a certain perspective on writing wind up in Berlin rather than Berlin actually as a, a perspective to give to a writer. I don't know. But um, you talk about the circus, uh, yeah. which is a classic. But you've also done uh, you've done a lot of traveling while you were writing. Where else? Yeah. Have, where else have you been? Uh, I traveled through Asia for a while. I was I was actually in Japan um, with the Pogues. And that's how I met Shane. Uh, and Shane worked on the album with you. He did some production for you. Yeah. So Shane sponsored it and co-produced it. Great. And uh, yeah, so I met um, I met Shane actually when I was juggling. I suppose it all comes back to the circus because I was a juggler and then I was juggling in nightclub and met Shane and uh, was chatting to him and told him that I wanted to do the. Uh, the Trans Siberian, which he got very enthusiastic about, and the said he wanted to do it as well. Yeah, the the, the railway trip across Russia, mm -hmm. Mongolia, and then uh, yeah, we were we were gonna do it like do this trip together with Victoria, his girlfriend, and Joey, his manager. And then uh, I don't know that I think Victoria was was writing a book, so she didn't want to do it, and kind of I ended up just doing it on my own. Uh, you took but, the Trans Siberian Express on your own. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. It was particularly funny because I was vegetarian at the time and they just wouldn't feed me on the in the dining car. <laughs> so I just ate uh, noodles yeah. through the... Like, the train, you don't really get off the train. It just stops at this... And so you're on the train for, like, a week. And uh, and so at the platforms, people are selling the, like, pot noodles through the window, you know? <laughs> and so you, vodka. So you, so you survived was, on like, pot noodles and vodka while traveling yeah, for from a the week. Trans-Siberian Express. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, and when when you say you you know you talked about kind of folk music in the in the tradition of what real folk music is and how it was done, I suppose as people would travel and collect songs and stories yeah. prior to it being kind of 
package sort of post Bob Dylan and then kind of exactly. quite, quite hideously currently. There is something that purports to be folk music now that's filling arenas. I mean, how yeah. would you... How, how, how do you look at that? Do you, do you embrace that for what it is, or no. do you think it's a well, misunderstanding? Like, I don't want to name names, but I, like, what, like, you mean Mumford like, and Sons, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> we I don't. Can do really, that then. They're not really in my uh, my my sphere of existence, but well, I know who they are, and sure. But I mean, like, it's not even their fault. Like, if that's what they do, like, I don't want to rag on what someone does. You no, know? absolutely. Uh, but it's very frustrating when I'm trying to explain to someone. Like I am a singer and I am a songwriter and I play folk music, but if you, like and you know people very uh, frequently kind of, <laughs> I guess it's hard to sell that, you know. It's yeah, I know. I mean, in a sense, it's a very marketable thing now, but because it's been so so yeah, narrowly I, defined, people, it doesn't it doesn't really say what it is, you know. Yeah, but the people that like that don't they won't like me, so they're not the market. <laughs> that doesn't no, that doesn't necessarily mean that. I think people could be quite open in their taste in music, even Mumford and Sons fans are probably own other people's records. But um, what I was kind of trying to say was as well, with the traveling, your songs, uh, did you collect any specific song ideas or musical elements? Was there anywhere particularly that you associated with kind of finding something that you incorporated? Whether uh, it be Asia well, or... I mean, I would have, Europe? I definitely think that traveling with the circus influenced me a lot. And whereabouts, whereabouts was this circus? In well, they were. Uh, it, we, I travelled with them in Croatia and in Turkey, um, but they're sort of from all over the place and nowhere, you know. Yeah, circus. And uh, but they played a lot of them. We all like everyone played music in, in the band, and they mainly played sort of swing and kind of ragtime, sort of honky tonk and stuff. I don't know. Fantastic. So basically, you were with this group of people from all over the world who were traveling around playing sessions in the evening after circus work. Uh, yeah. After circus, circus sessions. Yeah. <laughs> it, does, it sounds almost unimaginably fun and cool. And it also sounds like it comes from the 1920s or maybe in the, even the 1800s. <laughs> and in a weird way, the record is, it's hard to place, no, but not in a negative way. Sometimes people go in and they make a record that is no common threads in it that's not that's not what I heard anyway but it is really timeless and uh, and I like that because it's yeah. everything nowadays things tend to happen as part of little zeitgeisty movements so you'll have a, yeah. even great music you'll have this glut of music but you you know it's part of that scene or that thing uh, it's lovely to see something come along that um, that's got a sense of genuine independence what I think we should do right. now is have a listen to uh, the first single of the EP and the title track which is before the sunset we're going to play the video. Now, is it, what, anything you want to say about that song specifically? or Specifically that it's called Before the Sunset Ends. Yes. And, oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. See, that's a spontaneity <laughs> thing. does lead to making little mistakes. Like, I even um, have it written down. And what do I want to say about it? I don't know. Uh, will you ask me a question? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's have a look at it. Okay. And let everybody have a look at it. And then afterwards we can come back and talk about it. This is uh, Before the Sunset Ends. <laughs> 